To remove the lower brake assembly, place the Torrent 50 in a vise with the output shaft facing up. To remove the brake housing, first remove the brake adjustment retainer. Now, rotate the brake adjustment mechanism towards the minimum brake setting. This forces the mechanism out and allows us to get a screwdriver behind it to help push it out. You can now see the magnetic stator. Beneath this cover are 10 magnets with alternating poles. Inside the housing is a second stator. A copper rotor separates the two. To remove the housing, loosen the four fasteners and rock the housing gently until it separates from the hub. You can now see the end of the brake shaft onto which a helical gear is installed. This gear engages the beveled gear on the output shaft. To remove the brake shaft, install an Allen wrench into the end of the shaft, turn the assembly onto its side, and use a socket to loosen the nut off the end of the shaft. Remove the nut, the washer, and the copper rotor. You'll see that the rotor has a square opening in it. This mates with a square portion on the shaft, eliminating the need for a keyway. The lower brake shaft assembly can now be pushed out of the brake housing. This assembly uses the same gearbox that's used on the input shaft assembly, but in this case, it is sitting in the opposite direction. To remove the brake shaft, first remove this bearing, and then place the assembly into a holder. Remove this O-ring. Locate the end of the retainer ring. Use a pick to get under the end of the ring, and then walk it out of its groove. With the retainer ring out of the way, we can now remove the beveled gear. With it removed, you can see the bearing which remains in the gear reduction assembly and the wave ring which remains in the beveled gear. The shaft can now be removed from the gear assembly by tapping lightly on the end of it with something very soft. To service the gear reduction assembly, begin by removing the six fasteners that hold the end plate. We can now slide the end plate up over the dowel pins that hold the gear assembly to the housing. With it removed, you can see the portion of the gear assembly that accepts the shaft. On one side it's stainless steel and on the other it's aluminum. You can now slide the entire gear assembly out of the ring gear. The gear stack is made up of a ring that reduces friction to the end cap. carrier with planetary gears installed, another friction ring, another carrier with planetary gears installed in it and a sun gear on the end of it, and finally the input sun gear with friction rings on it. This makes up our two-stage gear reduction system. If the planetary gear or gear bushings ever need to be serviced, you can drive the holding pin out from the backside and then remove the gear with the two bushings inside of it. When reassembling the gear stack, make sure it's done in the correct order. It should consist of the friction washer, the sun gear and friction washer, the stainless steel carrier with planetary gears and a sun gear on the end of it, another friction washer, and the aluminum carrier and friction washer. This stack should be installed into the housing as shown. You can now replace the cover and install the six fasteners that hold it in place. We can now reinstall the brake shaft into the gear assembly. Now place the assembly into a holder. 
make sure the bearing is in the beveled gear and then reinstall it onto the shaft as shown. Next, reinstall the retaining ring by getting the loose end started into the groove and then working it into place with a pick. You can double check a correct installation by turning the beveled gear and observing the brake shaft rotating faster than the gear. Just as with the input shaft, there's a bearing on each side of the brake shaft. One bearing slides on to the lower end of the brake shaft and engages inside the brake housing body. The other bearing sits on the opposite end of the shaft and rests against an O-ring which serves to preload it. This bearing engages in a pocket located in the hub. When you take the brake assembly off and take the shaft out of the assembly, these bearings may stay in their pockets or they may stay on the shaft. Now reinstall the O-ring and bearing back onto the shaft. The gear reduction assembly and its shaft can now be reinstalled into the brake housing. You can ensure that the dowel pins will line up with the holes in the body by lining the grease communication hole up with the grease zerk in the body. By turning the assembly around, we can see the end of the shaft extending through the stator in the housing. We can now install the copper rotor, the flat washer, and the stover nut. Make sure the beveled portion of the stover nut is facing out. Now, tighten the nut back up. We are now ready to reinstall the brake assembly back into the hub. To do this, first ensure that the thrust bearing is installed. As previously noted, when you remove the brake assembly, the bearing may have come out with the brake assembly's beveled gear, as shown in this video, or it may have stayed in place in the hub. Now reinstall the fasteners and tighten them in an alternating fashion to ensure that the brake assembly is square to the hub. Torque these fasteners to 15 foot-pounds. We can now reinstall the brake adjustment mechanism with the Allen wrench aligned with the minimum brake setting. This will ensure that your fingers do not get pinched by the cap getting pulled into the magnets. Rotate the mechanism towards the maximum brake setting and the cap will pull into position. Replace the brake adjustment mechanism retainer and then install the fasteners. Position the brake setting in the desired location and tighten the fasteners. To reinstall the swivel, put it into position Align the holes in the swivel with the holes in the end cap and install the four fasteners. We can now reinstall the nozzle block. Inspect the O-rings on the output shaft and replace them if there's any damage. Place the block onto the shaft and reinstall the Allen bolt.